Uh, big news in the NFL today. The Colts firing head coach Frank Reich, and they name a TV analyst as their interim coach. No, it's not Pete Prisco. Ah, he it's, it's Jeff Saturday, the former Pro Bowl center for the Indianapolis Colts. So many years with Peyton Manning and those great teams. The Colts were crushed yesterday by the Patriots, 26-3. The offense has been sputtering all season long. They went out and they got Matt Ryan. He was benched for Sam Ellinger back on October the 24th, just a couple of weeks ago. Then they lost at home, blew a, a, a two-score lead in the fourth quarter at home to Washington. They fired their offensive coordinator. And then yesterday, their most pathetic showing of the season offensively in a 26-3 loss to the Patriots, leading to the firing of Frank Reich in his fifth season as head coach of the Colts. Let's get our NFL insider Jonathan Jones in here. And, and JJ, it's not often that uh, the news that followed a head coaching firing was the one that raised the most eyebrows, but okay, Frank Reich fired. All right, they haven't been good. Wow, they're naming Jeff Saturday interim? That's eyebrow raising. Is it unprecedented? I, I In the modern NFL, you know, like maybe back when, you know, the owners of football teams bought the team for like $15 and some war bonds. Maybe it took place then, but like, I, this is, this is really stunning. Um, you know, and I, I want to put it in proper context, right? I mean, it is just, just a, a, a former player taking over as interim head coach, but in so far as he has consulted for the Colts in any official capacity or just like answers Jim Ursay's phone calls, um, you know, he was at the Ring of Honor ceremony last week, but, you know, a high school football coach who hasn't played in a decade, who is now going to be the interim head coach of the Indianapolis Colts. Not only that, Chris, this is a team that has John Fox as a special assistant on it. John Fox, of course, the former head coach of the Carolina Panthers and the Denver Broncos. Uh, they, they have Gus Bradley as the defensive coordinator, former head coach of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Scotty Montgomery, a former head coach in the college ranks. Uh, Bubba Ventrone, they have guys who could take over as an interim head coach. Um, to bring someone from the outside, I, I'm not sure that that's happened as, as an interim. I, I think it has. But to bring someone from the outside as an interim, and it has, it definitely has, but to bring someone from the outside as an interim who does not have any sort of collegiate or professional coaching experience, head coach or positional coach, is unheard of in the modern NFL. And so if there are folks who are wondering, um, you know, actually, Chris, I'm, I'm talking with coaching agents. I was on the phone with one earlier today. Uh, I broke the news to him that it was going to be Jeff Saturday, and he couldn't stop laughing. He couldn't believe it. My inbox is filled up with um, sources who are texting emojis. Um, that, this has really taken the league by surprise. Um, Jim Irsay, this, this was a big, big shock around the league. So uh, I know it's early in the process. I mean, uh, are the Colts thinking that if he comes in and turns things around, like he could be a, a long-term solution, or is he looked at as a placeholder, like most interim head coaches are? I, I don't know what Jim Irsay's thinking. I'm not going to sit here and act like I do. Um, uh, you know, you'd have to believe that this is, uh, hey, you know, all right, you're going to bring somebody from the outside. You don't want to adjust roles on the coaching staff. You know, that's why it would have made sense for a John Fox, you know, who is not a, a positional coach to, to go and do that. Um, what does it mean for the future of the Colts? Well, I can tell you this, the Colts are going to have to, like any other NFL team, abide by the Rooney Rule when it comes to filling the position permanently. The Rooney Rule does not apply to an interim role, whether that's for a position or for the head coaching spot. So Jim Irsay, uh, whoever he wanted to hire, me, you, Pete Prisco, he could have done that. And he did that with Jeff Saturday um, and obviously will reserve uh, judgment on how he performs as a head coach. But... Chris, I got to tell you, there's a lot that goes into being a head coach in the NFL. And I know that Jeff Saturday is not ignorant to that. In fact, he probably knows it better than I do sitting right here right now. But when it comes to challenging plays, when it comes to uh, who to listen to on the headset, the, the, the delegation 
of duties. Uh, situational football, you know, the game has changed so dramatically since he was in the trenches. Um, I mean, look at where Nathaniel Hackett has struggled out in Denver, and he was a coordinator for the last several years. I, it, it really, it's hard to believe um, that the Colts believe that they are going to be able to win and compete with this because the Colts are also just a game and a half outside of first in the AFC South. They don't have the tiebreaker against the Titans, so it's really two games outside of it. But midway through the season, they're two games out of first, two games out of finally winning the division for the first time under general manager Chris Boward. And they're doing this. I, I struggle to understand it, and the rest of the league is struggling to understand it. It has been 10 years since Jeff Saturday has played in the league, and as, as we've noted, he hasn't been a coach in the league. He's been a head coach of a high school team, and most notably a, a TV analyst, and a, a very good TV analyst for ESPN for, for many, many years. But Frank Reich was the one that called the plays. They fired their offensive coordinator recently as well. Are we to presume that Jeff Saturday's gonna step in and, and call plays in his very first game? I, I have I have no idea what we are to presume, and 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 Jim Irsay, the owner. I, I think this is a running theme here, where you know Jim Irsay. I, I'll tell you, it it does follow with him. You know, I was there at the owners' meetings three weeks ago, where he caught us all by surprise and and decided to just, you know, say whatever he wanted to about Daniel Snyder, and you know the NFL and Roger Goodell did not want. Uh, Jim Irsay to talk about Daniel Snyder didn't want any owner to talk about it and everyone understood that Jim Irsay said nah I'm gonna do it and then even after being sort of admonished continued to do it time and again over the past couple of weeks Jim Irsay also called uh, some insiders at competing networks to tell them that he hadn't considered firing Frank Reich just eight or nine days ago that he was safe as head coach and then two games later he's no longer safe he's he's now installing a high school coach as and pseudo consultant as the interim head coach of a team that's two games out of first with half the season left. Uh, I, I don't know what we're to presume. There's going to be a press conference later this evening. Um, I am going to silence my phone, put it on do not disturb and pay extremely close attention to every word that is said there to learn more about uh, the thinking behind this. Yeah, it's the, uh, it's the old shrug emoji right now. I mean, we, we, we just don't know, but hopefully we'll find out a, a little bit more later into what the Colts are. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game, the highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics? Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.